This conference will now be recorded. So the course what we are going to learn here is full stack Java. And uh, we divide this full stack Java course into the categories like we initially start off with code Java. Even we call it as Java SC. We go with the next one database concepts. database concepts then we go with the next one web technologies advanced java even we call java e then the next one frameworks and we are going to see about real time tools So initially we start with code Java from the next class and uh, this code Java even we call it as Java SC. Java SC stands for Java Standard Edition. Java SC stands for what? Java Standard Edition. And the use of Java SC is used to develop, used to develop standalone or desktop applications standalone or desktop applications so can anyone take the examples of standalone applications what you have used it calculator yeah calculator notepad paint ms office like word excel Okay, all this comes under standalone applications. Once we install on our operating system, you need not connect to other uh, system in order to run our application. They are independent. Yeah. And the contents what we discuss in this core Java is like we initially start with the Java introduction, which I'm going to do in the next class. Then we go with the uh, Java features. Then we'll see download and install Java. And what is the latest version of Java? Java 16. 16 is the latest version. So we'll be looking how to download and install Java 16 version on our operating system. Then we'll be developing a Java application at command prompt since my operating system is windows so we are going with command prompt so if you are running some other operating system like linux or mac okay we set terminal but the steps will remain same then we'll move to the next one like download and install eclipse ide so in our codes i'm going to use the ide eclipse here once we download and install Eclipse IDE, we'll be developing a Java application in Eclipse IDE. It completes the introduction part of Java, like we'll be knowing what is the use of Java and how we download Java and install and how we develop applications. Then we move to the next one, Java Basics. Java Basics. In this Java Basics, we'll be learning the basic terminology of programming like the meaning of keywords the meaning of keywords variables data types operators if statement switch statement while loop do while loop for loop it is more of programming and this is the place where we start learning the programming and we can improve our programming and logical skills and starting from java basics i'll be giving assignments to you and once you complete assignments you need to submit it back it's a regular process starting from basic assignments okay. the next thing will be entering into arrays so can anyone say what is the use of arrays you store different data types hmm. arrays are for similar data types not for similar data types. Yeah. yeah, similar data types. Collection of elements. When you want to collect some elements, we go go for arrays here. Then. 
the next one we go with the very very important one java object oriented programming java object oriented programming and in this we'll be learning about the meaning of classes objects constructors then we discuss on static keyword packages inheritance polymorphism then we go with the inner classes access modifiers encapsulation abstract classes interfaces it is this is very very important and this will take totally five days for us to complete so in order to understand the remaining topics of java object oriented programming is the base for us we will move to the next one lan package java dot lan package and here we discuss some of the predefined classes like object class string class string buffer class string builder class math class wrapper classes a very simple topic the next and one more very very important topic exception handling the meaning of exception is like a runtime error when you type your source code when you run your program during runtime due to some abnormal situations we get some errors that errors only we call runtime errors or exceptions and once we get exception the remaining part of code will not get executed so it's going to terminate the application to avoid that abnormal termination only we go for exception handling okay. one more important topic exception handling then the next one multi-threading so what is this multi-threading is like uh, what is multitasking anyone can you go with examples a different process is at the same time yeah examples mm, like we are using chrome and this application at the same time right so in my case i have open browser then notepad yeah. go to meeting like that multiple applications listening to the songs and doing some other programming work like that that is multitasking then what is a threat have you seen threats anytime Mm, no. it's, it's a process yeah I, I want examples go with examples because i don't remember because i learned in like embedded system about threading yeah so threads are very simple to remember so if you take gmail gmail is a task in that gmail how many compose windows we can open one or multiple one only one if I open one compass window, can I mm -hmm. cannot open one more? Is it not possible in Gmail? Yeah, I think compass only works only one at a time. Only one? See here. Check yeah. it here. Okay. So when you say compass, again I'm clicking one more compass. So is it oh. opening multiple compass? Yes, yes. So that means your Gmail, every compass, every new message what you open, the new window, it's all part of Gmail only. One task. One so task. These only are threats here. These are only what here threats. Every new compass message is a threat. Since I'm able to open multiple, that means your Gmail supports multi-threaded. Got it? Yes. Right. And uh, one more good example is our go to meeting only. If you take go to meeting only, in this go to meeting, it's a task. In that I can show my screen, it's a threat. I can speak with you, it's a threat. I can record the class, it's a threat. Okay, the activity is what you perform under one task and I should be able to do multiple things simultaneously. That means the application supports multi-threading. Threads are part of one process. Clear everyone? The examples of threads? Yes. yes. Right? So I'll be elaborating more when we come to the topic multi-threading. The next and important one, collections. Arrays are also used to collect the data. Collections are also used to collect the data. But the difference is 
when we go for arrays we need to mention how many elements you want to collect like example if you say 50 that means we can collect maximum 50 elements only we cannot decrease the size or increase the size that means arrays are fixed size so but in reality we cannot go for fixed sizes that is a place where we go for collections so collections are used to collect elements of variable size not fixed one more very very important topic without collections no java projects that much important it is then we'll be moving to the next one called as functional interfaces lambda expressions and stream api very very important when these three topics are added in java 8 version so these features are very very important i want to take separate day on these features so if you complete collections only we can understand this stream api that's the reason we'll be doing this part after collections then the next and important topic is io package means input output package input output whatever the programs we write and the data what we use during runtime is the data temporary or permanent runtime runtime data is it temporary data or permanent data it's temporary temporary because it is stored in ram and ram is temporary where we can store data permanently physical drive hard disk like hard disk either in the form of data files or database tables so iowa package is mainly to create a data files on your hard disk it's mainly to manage the data files okay. once we complete iowa package we move to the next one database concepts or you can even call it as sql concepts where we are going to learn sql concepts using mysql database we'll be going with mysql database then once we complete this mysql then we'll go back to core java and we complete one more topic jdbc that is java database connectivity from our java program we can connect to the databases then. so with this we complete our core java then the next one we go with the next part web technologies even we call it as ui design user interface design and the contents what we will be learning is like html css javascript jquery xml json and angular so these are the contents what we will be learning under web technologies because before we enter into this java e the prerequisite is web technologies and minimum you should have an idea on html compulsory then only we can enter into advanced part then once we complete this web technologies we'll move to the next one java e java e stands for java enterprise edition java e stands for enterprise edition and use it to develop web applications it's for web applications can you take some examples of web applications any e-commerce website right amazon flipkart yeah. uh, the gmail google okay uh, book my show all these are what web applications where we uh, deploy in onto your server we copy the application onto the server and from other systems we can able to access it through network such type of things only we call web applications then under this java e we'll be learning the topics like servlets and jsp jsp stands for java server pages then. the next category and one more very very important one frameworks then. in this frameworks we'll be learning two important frameworks like hibernate and spring We'll be going with the two important frameworks, Hibernate and Spring. Then, under Spring, we'll be learning some of the modules like Spring, Core, or Bean module. Then, Spring DAO module, where we go with the 
three sub modules under this like spring jdbc module spring orm module and one more very important one spring data module then we'll be moving to the next one spring mvc module this is mainly used to develop web applications it's for web applications then spring boot module we go for spring boot module then once we complete these frameworks then we'll be even discussing two more important topics like web services where we go with the soap and rest these two web services will be learning then the next one will be even going with macro services using spring boot I'll be going with what microservices using Spring Boot. Then finally, in between, not finally, in between only, we'll be learning some of the real-time tools like JUnit, Maven, GitHub, Lombok, like this. Okay. So these are the contents what we'll be discussing in our course. Then the duration of the course goes with something around uh, 45 days. Okay. And uh, that time, that time will be Monday to Friday. Our class timing will be Monday to Friday at 7 p.m. IST. And the class will go for one hour. And the class is getting recorded. That recording part will be shared to you every day. It's a regular process. Okay. And uh, even the document whatever i'm preparing the diagrams whatever i'm going to draw the programs whatever i'm going to show everything will be shared to you nothing like hidden everything will be shared to you after the class it's a regular process right 